This is Hannibal here from the Hannibal TV. Dot com and today I have a producer and writer of music videos, film, TV series, lots of stuff he's working on. Uh, he was also the producer of the Mass Mutilator film that starred Brick Bronski, who I've had in a three hour interview on this channel before he passed away. And he is co writing the Blood Hunter Thirst and Rage film with me that we hope to put into the production this summer. Dale Schneck, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. And I'm so happy to be on your hugely successful podcast. Wow. I mean, uh, you you really have a fan following. So uh, we appreciate uh, uh, being connected with you. And um, I want to, at the top, thank you for doing the extensive interview that you did last summer with uh, the star of Mass Mutilator, Brick Bronski. He sat in the same chair here in my office when you interviewed him about the making of Mass Mutilator. So thanks to you uh, and spreading the word. And um, also in memory of Brick Bronski, why uh, this is, uh, uh, a, a really uh, great way to follow up with a new project. Yes, The Mass Mutilator, for anyone who hasn't seen it, it is on YouTube movies and a bunch of other places that Dale will tell us about. But for anyone that, that hasn't seen it, it was recorded many years ago, but not released until 2019. So it has a very like, early 90s feel to it and it stars brick bronski the the wrestler who also had a successful acting career but as a as a 80s horror movie fan i thoroughly enjoyed this movie and i don't have a a high attention span for movies i'll fall asleep during them but <laughs> i i i sat through this one and i really enjoyed it well i appreciated when um i think in your review which all of the cast and crew appreciated. Uh, you mentioned that you could relate to being a house parent in a group home for juveniles, which is the, the body of the story about Mass Mutilator, a pro wrestler who comes and gets a job as a house parent. And, um, and, and that was an experience that a former client of mine had an actor and he had a day job as a house parent in a group home. So that's where I got the idea when I co-wrote the Mass Mutilator script with uh, Ed Pulgardi. And um, so, you know, we were happy to hear that you could relate to that uh, environment of uh, a group home needing big guys uh, to handle sometimes very violent, dangerous uh, young adults. So um, Hannibal, you were right on the money when you viewed the movie uh, in that way. The film is also available streaming on Amazon Prime and Tubi, and you can buy the Blu-rays and DVDs from amazon.com and uh, Severin Films eBay. Um, so it's, it's out there. It's available. And of course, this Blood Hunter Thirst and Rage film, before we get into your history, I put the GoFundMe link in the descriptions for fans that want to help contribute to the budget. But we are going to do this no matter what this summer. And it's, it's very exciting. Of course, my Blood Hunter wrestling character is going to be part of the film, but as it's going to be a horror movie. Now, we're not yeah. going to really give away much about the script because it's still in development. The synopsis has been written, but uh, speaking of Brick Bronski, his daughter, Raquel Beltzner, who uh, is a theater actress, has agreed to be part of the film, and she's an absolute knockout and this is going to be her very first 
non-theater acting role and her father was such a success, uh, successful actor that I'm really looking forward to working with her in this film. I'm so excited that you connected uh, with Raquel and uh, she's agreed to want to do this uh, film with you, the Blood Hunter film. Uh, I think she's going to get a lot of attention uh, and uh, she has the uh, Rick Bronsky, I believe, uh, innate talent to just entertain. And I think she's going to be great in this project. So I'm glad, Hannibal, that you reached out to Raquel and, and, and she's on board. Yes, and we've been friends for a number of years. She's actually the one that hooked me up with her father and got in contact with me after seeing another video I did about her father. Um, so I think we're, we already have some chemistry together and I think we're gonna work well together, but with that, without giving much away, do you wanna talk about a little bit of the idea for this uh, Thirst and Rage film that we're gonna be working on? Yeah, we don't wanna to give too much away cause that'll take away from the fun. Uh, but um, basically, uh, it's your character, your ring character, your pro wrestling character, the blood hunter, and you have some notoriety and people all around the world watch your podcasts. And it's about uh, that ring personality that you have. And, um, and then you have a vampire gene uh genetically uh that's haunting you that's all i want to say at this point because this is going to be a wild ride and uh and i think we're going to bring something absolutely new to the vampire genre and at the same time, it's going to have that 80s horror movie-ish feel similar to what the mass mutilator had. Of course, it'll be set in, in modern times as the blood hunter is a modern character. But uh, for those 80s slasher movies fans, it will have that. And it's certainly going to have some absolutely gorgeous women in it. Oh, Raquel, yeah. Just one of them. And it's going to oh, have more than uh, one. violence. <laughs> Well, and when you talk about slasher, well, I brought a, uh, on board Paul Sutt. And Paul is a partner in a company based in LA that does horror makeup, props, weapons, costumes for major horror films. And I've known Paul and I'm his personal manager and I've known him since we shot Mass Mutilator, but even before that. So once people know the actual company that's doing this, Paul Sutt's company with his partner in LA, uh, we're going to have a uh, top level, top shelf, special gore effects, slasher effects, like nothing you've ever seen before. So um, he's already on board. So you're gonna learn more about that and work closely with him as we shoot this film. Very exciting. And again, any fan that wants to help out with the budget, we do have the GoFundMe link in the description. And as time goes on, we may actually have some incentives for the GoFundMe as this, this film develops a little bit further. Good, terrific. Now, speaking of Brig Bronski, uh, a lot of wrestling fans only know him from his wrestling in, in Stampede and NWA and some other federations. People that don't know about his wrestling career, just look up his interview with me here on The Hannibal TV. He's best known for his behind the scenes fight with Brian Pilbid. But he had a successful acting career. And for me, I actually enjoyed some of his movies. Uh, Class of Newcomb High 2 was, was one of my favorites. 
Uh, how did you meet him and what is your connection with him exactly other than he was the star of Mass Mutilator? I was um, uh, a friend of a WWF referee by the name of Mike Mitnam. And Mike uh, would be refereeing a lot of the taping of the original syndicated shows here in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Mike was also the host of a cable TV show. And so Mike was interviewing actors that I managed that I was able to get into other feature films. And one day Mike Mittman showed up at my door of my home and there was this big, tall, muscular guy there next to Mike. And Mike Mittman said, uh, Dale, I want you to meet Jeff Beltzner, his real name. And he said, uh, can we come in and talk? And that started the ball rolling. And shortly thereafter, I was managing uh, Brick Bronski under that screen name. Um, and uh, some of the actors that I was managing back then, I guess that was in the mid 80s, possibly, I had done other trauma cult movies out of New York. So I knew the owner of trauma pictures, Lloyd Kaufman. And I called Lloyd and said, I've got a new client that I think he would be excellent in one of your movies. And Lloyd said, sure, let's, let's talk to him. So I took uh, Brick Bronski to Manhattan. He met Lloyd and within like a day or two, Bricks did his first movie, which was Sergeant Kabuki Man, NYPD. That was the first film that Brick did. And shortly after Brick started working with Lloyd, Lloyd called me and said, this guy's incredible. We're going to make him a lead in Class of Newcomb High 2. And we want him also to do Class of Newcomb High 3. So that's how he did those pictures for Troma, um, because they loved him. And uh, he became sort of a cult star from those movies. Uh, and then there was an opportunity to be cast in Jean-Claude Van Damme's big budget movie in Thailand, which was called The Quest and Brick played one of the international fighters uh, in that movie. So um, yeah, he quickly um, demonstrated very um, um, much talent in front of the camera and the crews, the directors, the producers, they really liked working with Brick Bronski. He was a dream because he would actually deliver and, and, and make a scene better than even it might have been written. Now, his movies, uh, there was a lot of like sexiness in, in a lot of them. And I think we're going to see some of that in, in these movies, too, or, or in this one, which we're going to start things off with and see how it goes from there. Um, as far as uh, Brick as a wrestler, from watching his movies, I couldn't help but think politics killed his wrestling career because he was so charismatic and he had a million dollar look. Uh, do you think it was just he was more interested in acting and he had political forces against him? Why he didn't go further in wrestling? Because he definitely never reached his full potential as a wrestler. No, I, I think you're absolutely spot on, uh, Hannibal. I, I do. I think he didn't like playing games. Uh, and I think he also, um, he was a team player. But if you gave him something stupid that made him look ridiculous, uh, I don't think he went along with that very well. Um, if you gave him an opponent 
half his size and you wanted him to do a job, um, I think, you know, he would discuss it. He would be extremely polite. But I think he got tired uh, of playing some of the games that from being an outsider in the business, as I am, I think he wasn't that comfortable with playing those games that sometimes uh, wrestlers have to play. Yeah, well, wrestling is a big political game, which is why I'm kind of sick of it as well. Another wrestler that was in the film who's also an MMA promoter is Doug uh, Yazinski. He's in the Mass Mutilator film, that is. Yes. And I interviewed him. Very good interview for anyone who wants to look it up. But uh, how did you become involved with him and what did you think of his performance? He was a friend of uh, Brick Bronski. Uh, so Brick really introduced me into the world of pro wrestling. Uh, I, I didn't know any pro wrestlers up to the time that Mike Mittman uh, brought uh, Brick Bronski to me and to my office in my home. So with Brick came Doug Yazinski and Jeff Sibok, and and uh, and they were doing some shows, some indie shows that were selling out uh, arenas, three, four, five thousand uh, seat arenas sold out. So they took me to shows, and and that's how sort of I did my research a bit uh, about wrestlers and terminology, et cetera. So thanks to Doug Yazinski, whom I plan to, as a writer, uh, write some parts for these guys. I think one of the fun things for your movie, Hannibal, Blood Hunter, is I think in each episode, there will be cameo roles where the wrestling fans as well will be able to see someone that they know from either shows they've seen, attended, television shows, and people who are now on uh, some of the uh, videos from the two main uh, wrestling promotions. They might be recognized uh, if we go that route. And I think that would be fun. Oh, for sure. And there's already been some famous wrestlers uh, who, who have reached out to me uh, that, that have said, if you have anything for me, let me know. But there's also been a lot of independent wrestlers and some fans that that have wanted to know, is there parts as extras or is there... Is there anything for them? And even there's a fan on here, Harry, is asking, where are we shooting it? So maybe if you could say where we're going to be shooting this and if if anyone is serious about potentially being looked at for a part in this film, how could they contact you? Um, we're going to shoot it here in the Allentown, Pennsylvania area of the United States. I know, Hannibal, you're in Canada. Um, and isn't it sort of ironic that's where the McMahons started their television empire? And that's where, you know, Jimmy Snooker had that incident with his girlfriend in a motel here in Allentown, Pennsylvania. So for many years, the biggest names in the WWF and then the WWF they were taping shows here in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and nearby uh, Hamburg, Pennsylvania, at the Hamburg Fieldhouse. So, so it's it's going to be great. So, if people want to travel to Eastern Pennsylvania, uh, about forty-five minutes uh, from Philly, and about an hour and forty-five minutes from Manhattan, um, this is the ideal place to do a wrestling movie that's a horror movie um, because this is where Vince and his dad actually rented out an arena at the Allentown Fairgrounds. Once a month, they would shoot four hours in the agricultural hall 
And then the next night, I believe, would go to the Hamburg Field House and shoot four hours there for one of their other syndicated shows. So yes, um, and if uh, people want to uh, reach me, maybe uh, we can put up my email at um, uh, in the description, Hannibal, if you want to do that. But it's my name, one word, Dale Schneck at hotmail.com. Very good. I, I will definitely do that. And you sent some pictures that we'll go through from your career. Uh, maybe I'll just put them up and you could tell us a little bit about them. Okay. Uh, this is Gene Wilder and me back when I had hair, never as much hair as Gene Wilder always had. And um, I, I don't even remember which um, movie this was. I was a film critic for eight years. And so I met a lot of people in Hollywood and stars and directors, et cetera. And that's what prompted me to want to get into the, the business itself. Um, but um, yeah, what a great character. This was at uh, Les Gargot, which was, um, maybe still is, a very uh, upscale French restaurant in Manhattan. So we had come from the screening and then he and I sat down and had lunch and he's probably talking to someone who came up to our table. So, but that's me with hair, Hannibal. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of escargot, that's one of my favorite foods. I oh, eat I love escargot. Yeah. Or champignon. Yes. <laughs> now I'm getting hungry. <laughs> now, what do we have here? That's Carol Burnett, star of television, a hit star for how many years? And uh, she did a number of movies. Um, uh, she, uh, this was, uh, she and I had lunch, and uh, this was for a movie called The Wedding. Um, and um, it was Desi Arnaz Jr. Uh, was one of the cast members. I think he was the groom in the movie. And uh, uh, I, I'm trying to think of the other stars, but she was the star of the film. And what a charming young lady. And um, just a little small uh, note, but her um, younger sister went to Moravian College in nearby Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and I am a graduate of uh, Moravian College. So while we had lunch that day, we were talking, comparing notes about where her younger sister was attending college while Carol was still working uh, in film and television. And here's another one. Oh, this guy, we've got to use him in our movie. Uh, this, this man is going to go places. He's a recently signed um, actor, but primarily a pro wrestler. Uh, he is so dedicated. Um, Hannibal, you're going to love Dino. Now, his wrestling gimmick is Dino Might, but his uh, real name and acting name is Dino Theodoratos. He speaks Greek fluently as well as English. He lives in Brooklyn. And this man is getting so much attention from casting people. He just read for a part the other day. So if you can open any doors uh, at wrestling shows, uh, this guy is, is going to deliver because I only manage him for acting, but he is so dedicated to his wrestling career and his newly found acting career. And I tell you, someday this man's going to walk off with uh, some a pile of awards for acting. Think of him as sort of the big, tough uh, Robert De Niro type. That's Dino. And of course, here you are with Brick. Yeah, this was, uh, I was also a high school uh, teacher. And so when I was teaching, uh, at one point in my career, when I was starting to uh, manage some people, I asked 
uh, Brick if he would want to come to the school and talk to the students. He probably was the most popular guest speaker that school ever, ever had. And so kids wanted their pictures taken with him. And somewhere I have a photo of Brick putting two of the high school kids in a headlock on either side with either arm. Um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, he, he was quite a guy. He, he, he loved talking to the kids and he was a great motivational speaker, actually. And here's another one. Looks like you're on set. Yes, that's on the set of Mass Mutilator. That is the co-writer that I mentioned earlier. That is Ed Pulgardi. He now works and produces movies in Los Angeles. So we were very fortunate. And I managed uh, Ed Pulgardi before he and I actually started to write together. So we co-wrote Mass Mutilator. In fact, he was in a trauma movie before um, Brick Bronsky. Uh, so that's how actually, I think I may have mentioned earlier, I got to know Lloyd Kaufman, the owner of Troma Films, because Ed also did um, a Troma movie. Ed was in a movie called Maniac Cop. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I've been having a, a good time and lucky to meet great people to work with and that's why I feel fortunate, Hannibal, to work with you on this new project, Blood Hunter. Yes. And of course, I think this is one of your musicians, isn't it? No, this is, uh, you interviewed this gentleman a few weeks ago. Oh, this, he's one of those wrestlers from yeah. uh, Ring of Honor and AEW. Yes, this is uh, Manuel Um uh, Manuel, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm losing his name, uh, Soriano, Manuel Soriano. Uh, he wrestles under the single name Adrian Soriano, but he is part of the uh, tag team uh, trio uh, Primal Fear. And so you interviewed Adrian Soriano with uh, the uh, Primal Fear group I think one gentleman couldn't show up for that interview was having Wi-Fi problems. Uh, but, um, and what an incredible actor uh, Manuel is. I mean, I've gotten lucky. And I guess it's because you people in the wrestling industry are natural entertainers. You have to sell a story without dialogue in essence and your natural stunt fighters so it seems natural for me i'm surprised that more pro wrestlers have not gotten into film because with your stunt fighting ability and delivering lines without actually dialogue all the time it's natural so manuel soriano we did a photo shoot that day of that photo um, that you just showed. And uh, I'm getting a lot of attention for him as well. So again, I manage him as his acting manager, but he still has a, a very successful career growing. And, and thank you for interviewing him and Primal Fear. And who do we have here? This is the very famous director, Brian De Palma. Now, this goes back a few years, again, because I have hair in this shot. Um, Brian De Palma did the first uh, version of the movie Carrie. Um, and then for this movie, I was interviewing him for a movie called The Fury, which starred uh, Kirk Douglas, Andrew Stevens. I'm trying to think of the female lead that I interviewed that same day. He went on to do The Untouchables. I mean, just Google Brian De Palma, uh, Bonfire of the Vanities. I mean, this man, uh, what an incredible director, uh, incredible. And um, so, and I think that's why, you know, I, I got tired of being someone to interview all of these directors and producers and stars. I wanted to be 
on the production end, writing, producing, et cetera. But it was people like Brian De Palma who inspired me and motivated me, <coughs> excuse me, to want to be in the business and produce Blood Hunter, starring Hannibal. And the last picture I'll put up is a guy that uh, is very well going to be part of our film, Thirst and Rage, with, uh, he was also in Mass Mutilator, and he was in one of your recent music videos that you actually directed as well, from what I understand. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she's going to be in it too. I don't know. <laughs> this is Tom Taylor. Tom Taylor plays uh, Brian Wirth in Mass Mutilator. He's one of the three leads in the film. Tom is an incredible, um, he was a, uh, a wrestling heel. He was GQ Bronski. When Brick Bronski would be a heel, this guy, Tom Taylor, would get the crowd so riled up in wrestling arenas that he had to have police protect him uh, so he could get out of the building and get home safely. He's also the star of a feature film called Brooklyn Cop. Uh, and um, he's a concert promoter and he's going to do fight choreography uh, for uh, Blood Hunter. Uh, we're probably giving him a role in the movie as well. Um, Tom is so well connected. Um, Tom is the cousin of Amanda Seyfried. And if people know who she is, she is, uh, is a Hollywood A-list star. She's been in the Mamma Mia movies. She's been in Les Miserables, the feature film. Um, she just won an Emmy uh, for a Netflix uh, feature film. Uh, so, and who got her into the movie business? Tom Taylor, because Tom Taylor was also a talent scout. And if you watched the music video, he cast all the gorgeous female models that we used in that music video, which was called Love Hurts by the rap artist Demetrius. So you're going to love working with Tom Taylor. This guy has so much energy and uh, he's, he's going to make this movie uh, really rock and, and go places. I already know I'm going to get along well with him just from seeing the interviews that I've seen of him. And I was oh, actually a big fan of his performance in mass mutilator. Great. Oh, that, yeah, you, uh, you're right on track with Tom. You're going to love working with him. Uh, put you all together. We have uh, the, the, the perfect recipe for the next big horror franchise. Uh, and I believe that. I know maybe you're too modest to say that. And we're in the initial stages of development. But... Um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have this thing in front of the cameras, uh, hopefully uh, by June, and uh, the more people can participate, they can say they were in on the ground floor of Blood Hunter. Imagine how few people can say that about any horror uh, franchise ever made. Now fans can do that, Hannibal. They can get in on the ground floor with this big project that uh, I'm so glad you included me with your desire to make this series. There's a fan question on here for you. What would your wrestling name be had you been a wrestler? <laughs> uh, 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 well, more like you could have been I, would be ring, I, I would be ring fodder. So, you know, if I could stumble into the ring, I'm 80 years old. So, uh, but I, uh, I've been blessed by God that uh, I have good health and a lot of energy. And uh, 
and it's because I'm I'm surrounded by people with a lot of energy. So um, maybe the bald twerp or the bald nerd, uh, and then you big guys could just throw me around. And after one match, then I'd have to retire. I think my favorite horror movie was probably the very first Halloween. Uh, what was yours? Um, wow. That is a terrific good question. Um, I, I like The Shining a lot. Uh, Stephen King's The Shining. Um, when I first uh, screened that movie, I didn't care for it. The more I've watched it, uh, I liked it. Um, but also an old black and white movie called The Thing. I don't know if you've ever seen that, where there's uh, an Arctic expedition. And uh, in the, I don't know if it's Antarctica or whatever, but this Arctic expedition there's a spaceship, I think something lands in the ice and they pull out of the ice this thing and it's a frozen guy, a giant. And once he thaws out, all hell breaks loose. And um, John Carpenter, I believe, remade the thing. And I interviewed John Carpenter when I was in Los Angeles and, and came from the screening. And, and John Carpenter's remake of The Thing, I think, probably is, is up there uh, very near the top of one of my preferred. But also Rob Zombie's remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I, I think Rob Zombie is a great horror director, a wild, wild guy. But I think Rob Zombie knows how to really make a horror movie that'll make your hair stand up if you have it. Yeah, speaking of that, his uh, he did a Halloween too, didn't he? Yes. yes. Yeah, his Halloween, which it's I think better. I saw in theater around 2007, was also very good. Yes, yes. Yeah, so there's so many good things out there. And, um, and our task is to compete like you compete in the ring. Our task, we have to deliver, and we are going to. There's a fan making a comment. How can you film a movie with a $200 budget? Well, the GoFundMe this early might only be just over $200, but we're doing this no matter what. Any contribution that the fans make to the GoFundMe is just going to help our budget and help make it better. And I'm confident as the movie gets closer to shooting in this, this summer that – Every little bit counts. $200 pays for something. So that helps the movie out. So any fan that wants to help us out, the GoFundMe link is in the description. But this movie is being made one way or another. But we appreciate any support we can get. But the budget is certainly not going to be $200. Yes, and, and we can't shoot with a potato. I've discovered that there are no wide-angle lenses on a potato. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I must say, uh, I, I wouldn't be on board if I didn't have trust in you, Hannibal, because when you approached me about wanting to do this, you came loaded with everything that someone needs, and uh, I trust you implicitly, and, and yes, the, the budget is going to be more than adequate. Um, to, to make this a top shelf production. And not only that, but there's a lot of people that are so confident about the project that they're willing to participate just because they're confident in the future of it that should the first one go well, as we do more, the budgets will increase and be more lucrative for those involved. So I've been putting on wrestling events since 2007. Some of them have had $30,000 budgets. Some of them have had 7,000. Some of them have had five. Uh, I'm used to working with budgets, but I'm very passionate about this and I'm not even doing any more wrestling events for great North wrestling until we finish 
this movie. It's going to have all of my concentration other than, of course, YouTube. So, Dale, I really appreciate you uh, doing this interview with me and enlightening the fans a little bit about the Blood Hunter Thirst and Rage film. Do you have any social media where fans could follow you if they want to learn more about you? And I know the, uh, the Mass Mutilator film is, is out there for people that want to watch it. So maybe you could remind them where they can uh, order it. I had um, a Facebook page under my name. I, I deactivated it uh, last week um, for re reasons I don't want to get into. Um, uh, because sometimes when you're um, a manager, uh, you get a lot of requests and, to, you know, uh, work with people, which is great. That's good. Uh, I'm not against that. But I had shut that down. I probably will reactivate the Dale Schneck uh, Facebook page. But I have a website that is Dale Schneck Entertainment development.com. That's a long URL. But again, because I don't sell things, uh, I only deal with basically people in the industry. But if someone wants to go, uh, and if you Google me, I know that that um, uh, website will come up when you Google Dale Schneck. Again, Dale Schneck, entertainmentdevelopment.com. You'll see the pages about people I manage. You'll see some of their videos. You'll see a page devoted exclusively to Mass Mutilator, uh, what I've done in the past, uh, some of my blogs. So that would be a way that, you know, if people want to check me out and then they can see a lot of the photos of me with celebrities uh, and uh, and get a little bit of an idea of what I've done and what I'm currently doing. Fart Doctor has a question. Will this be a comedy horror film like Scream or Zombieland? Not the way I think you and I envision it, Hannibal, unless I'm wrong. This is going to be uh, a horror film to set trends. and. Um, I believe the content is, is truly for um, primarily uh, high school kids on up. Correct me if I'm wrong, because this was your vision, um, Hannibal. But uh, yeah, this is, I don't envision this as comedy. Sometimes you need something funny to happen to relieve the tension so that people don't say, I can't take this anymore. That's different than doing this for laughs. So um, my vision for you uh, and this whole project, Hannibal, is something very serious, very dark, lots of gorgeous women, and a lot of violence and gore. Isn't that what people expect? If they go to any streaming service, they want, that's what I think they want in horror. And that's actually what I want in horror. And since you and I are co-writing this, as someone was asking who's writing this, that's what we're going to get. And as far as the comedy, yeah, there can be some, some, some funny stuff potentially happen or some jokes made amongst some of the characters. But I don't think the Blood Hunter is going to be portrayed as a as a comedy character or anything like that. No. Because everyone knows from the wrestling world, uh, particularly after what happened last December, <laughs> there isn't too much funny about his reputation. <laughs> yeah. I When you contacted me, I was a little frightened, thinking, do I want to work with this guy? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I am. Um, no, it's, uh, I'm so excited about this. So um, this is my top priority right now, Hannibal. So uh, let, let's do this and let's have fun and let's deliver one, one hell of a great horror film.
Exactly. And I think that's what the fans want. And I've had very positive reaction from the fans of my channel about this. And not only from the fans, but from my friends who know I've been kind of disillusioned with wrestling in recent years. They they see how excited I am about this. And they said, you know what? I think this is a very positive project for you. And this is definitely something worth pursuing, but I'd like to thank you again for taking some time out of your busy schedule to appear with us. And I'll let you close this off with wh however you want to close this off. Well, again, let me um, uh, say that Brick Bronski rest his soul probably started this path and to honor his memory uh, and to include his daughter in this project, I am honored to be a part of recognizing what he brought to the screen and the great stories and experiences he told and shared with me. So Hannibal, thank you for joining our paths and 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 honoring again the memory of Brick Bronski with this project. Thank, Thank you. you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please help me out and like this video. Then click the subscribe and get notifications buttons so you don't miss any of my latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Facebook at The Hannibal TV for more live streams and videos. And while you're at it, follow us.